are going to talk about the product and quotient rule today. Um, hopefully you've read the section, but I, I just want to show you something about really quick the, the quotient rule, or excuse me, the product rule. So the idea here is, you know, let's say I have y equals x squared times the function 3x plus 1, and I want to take the derivative of this. So we don't, up until now, we've had to actually FOIL this x squared through and then take the derivative. Notice, I just want to show you, we cannot, so if I try and do y primed of x squared, which is 2x, times the derivative of 3x plus 1, which is 3, this says that my derivative is 6x, but notice if we take this x squared through, my function is actually 3x cubed plus x squared, and then we can see clearly that what is the actual derivative? Well, the actual derivative, derivative <laughs> would be 9x squared plus 2x. So there's, so this is a little confusing, right? Because it's like, well, which one is correct? Well, we know from our work before that this is correct because we simply did an algebraic simplification, and then we know that this actually is the derivative of 3x cubed plus x squared. So where, where was the thing that we kind of assumed? Here, what did I assume here? I assumed that I could take the derivative of each one and just multiply them together. So that is something that we cannot do in calculus. We cannot, I, I call it distributing the derivative across multiplication. So um, hopefully you, you read the book. If you look on page um, 202, in the book they do a pretty nice job of explaining or proving the product rule. Um, so I'll let you, you know, look at that some night when you can't sleep. <laughs> it might help you sleep. It's actually not too bad to follow. Um, to prove the product rule, what you have to do is you have to go back to the definition of the derivative. But here's what the product rule says. I want to make sure I'm writing it the way your book does. But this is what we do to take the derivative of two things that are being multiplied together. So two functions. Now remember, I'll show you, this works for constants also, but for constants it's a little bit different. But I have two functions, if I'm multiplying them together, here's the rule. You leave the first, multiply it by the derivative of the second, and then switch that. So I leave, it actually doesn't matter what order you do this in um, because it's addition, but what you want to do is you want to leave one, take the derivative of the other, then leave the other and take the derivative of the one. So I usually think of this as the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Let me say that again. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So that's what the product rule is. So let's go back to that example that we had up there and let's verify. I mean, this is not a proof by any means because you could argue, well, Sarah, that is just one function that this works for. Let's look at what the product rule says to do here. So y prime says to leave the first function, so that would be x squared, multiply by the derivative of the second function. So there's my second function. So if you notice in this case, my x squared is going to be my f of x. We'll do a little bit of colors here. And then my um, 3x plus 1, that is going to be my g of x, okay? So I take, leave the first, take the derivative of the second, which is 3, plus, now look at what this says, leave the second, making sure to put parentheses, times the derivative of the first. And now if I simplify this, it's, you're like, but Sarah, that doesn't look like what we had before. Oh, but just wait for a moment. So if I simplify this, if I take this 2x through, right, and I multiply times each one, and then I simplify, I get 9x squared plus 2x, and that makes us so happy because that's what we got up here. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, let's, let's do a couple more. Why do we care about the product rule? Well, because you're in a calculus class and I'm going to force you to care about it. But let me show you another reason why. So let's just find dy dx here for all a bunch of functions. So what if we had something like y equals, so maybe we still have that x squared, but now instead of having, um, you know, just something like 3x plus 1, what if I had x squared times the square root of 2x minus 3, right? Now look at what we have. So this is, so 
the instance before, and since before, I could have taken this x squared and I could have multiplied this through and I would have been fine to find the derivative. However, if we look at something like this, notice this is not so easy now, right? Now, I, <coughs> excuse me, I can't take that x squared through. I mean, I guess I could, anyway, there's some algebra tricks we could do to make bring that x squared in, but for right now, I can't actually do anything with this. So to be able to find the derivative of this, oh, I messed with my, brush size here, and that's bothering me, and I think my ink flow. Okay, so to take the derivative of this, what I want to do, oh, Sarah, I want to rewrite, because I know, what are my two functions? My first function is x squared. My second function is the square root of 2x plus, minus 3. So I'm going to take the derivative here, remembering what we leave the first times the derivative of the second, plus leave the second times the derivative of the first. There's the product rule. You're going to need to know that. So I'm going to leave the first. So I leave x squared times the derivative of the second. We got a little bit of a general power rule going on. So remember here, I bring the one half down. I take one away. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now plus, now I'm going to leave the second and multiply by the derivative of the first, which what is the derivative of x squared? That is 2x. And now we just need to simplify this a little bit. So let's talk about simplifying. So we have y primed equals, this negative puts this sucker on the bottom, right? So look at what we have. We have y x squared over the square root of 2x minus 3. And I'm going to want you to simplify these. And then what do we have here? We have just plus, I'll bring the 2x out front, the square root of 2x minus 3. So let's go ahead and combine these. So this was the calculus part. Now let's get into the algebra part. So if I want to combine these, I need to get a common denominator. This whole thing is over 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 2x minus 3 to get a common denominator. Okay, and so let's see what we get here. So we're going to work a little bit on simplifying because I found um, where my students struggle is when, when they have poor algebra skills. So what we end up getting here, if I multiply these two together, the square roots cancel. That's kind of nice. And then I can put this all over the square root of 2x minus 3, if you notice. So all I've done here is I've multiplied these two guys together. The square roots undid. Un undid. <laughs> I am not an English teacher. The square roots um, were undone. I think that would be better. I have a father and a sister who were English teachers, so and if they knew I just said the square roots undid, they would be very upset with me. Oh, I love when I make myself laugh um, in a room all by myself, talking to myself while I'm doing a lecture. Okay, anyway. Right? If you can't laugh at yourself seriously, then then you're going to have, you know, what can you laugh at? So here, what did I do? I just took that 2x through. That gave me 4x squared minus 6x, and then I just simplified. The reason this is nice to have it like this is if I'm going, oh, I need a y prime here. If I'm going to be doing stuff with this later, like maybe I want to find maximums and minimums, then I can see that I just set my numerator equal to zero. Or maybe I want to plug some numbers in later on. It's nice to have it completely simplified like this. So I had, I had an advisor in graduate school when I was teaching calculus as an, as an undergrad or excuse me, as a graduate student, used to tell me, you know, the calculus part is easy. It's the algebra that's hard. This was just the calculus. All of this was just algebra. Okay, I'm, I'm very talkative today. I don't know if that's different any other day, but sorry, I'll try and get this done. For those of you who, um, that drives you a little crazy. Sorry about that. So part B, let's find, again, let's find um, the derivative. We'll do one more example with uh, the product rule, and then we'll talk about the quotient rule, and then I will be done talking. That'll be amazing. So let's talk about, um, well, here's another reason we might want, want to use um, the product rule, is if we have maybe something that is a little bit more complicated. So maybe I have something like this, 4 minus x cubed to the fifth times x plus 1 cubed. 
if we didn't have the product rule, we would actually have to foil this out. Ooh, and I love mathematics and I don't want to foil that out. And I would have to foil this out, put it all together, and you would have like, oh my goodness, just huge numbers, something like x, x to the 45th power or something. So I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and use the product rule. Again, the product rule says leave the first, multiply by the derivative of the second, plus leave the second, multiply by the derivative of the first, where in this case, here is my, my first function, and then what is my second function? This um, x plus 2 quantity cubed. Okay, so let's just do what it, we do what the math tells us to do. So I'm going to leave the first, 4 minus x cubed to the fifth times the derivative of the second. So I just have simple general power rule bring the 3 down, take 1 away, multiply by the derivative of the inside. I know you don't need that one there, but just so you can see what's happening. Plus, now leave the second, because that's the one I just took the derivative of. Leave the second times the derivative of the first. So bring the 5 down, leave the inside. Ooh, I'm going to run out of room. Take 1 away times, oh, Sarah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Negative 3x squared. All right, I'm going to start over here a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do to simplify this. So that was the easy part. Remember, that was the calculus. Now we got the hard part. I'm just going to bring this 3 out front, and then we'll see what we can do kind of to simplify this. So bring that 3 out front. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that negative 3 and the 5. That becomes a negative 15. And I'm going to, whoa, that was a little crazy. I'm going to bring the x squared over, because this is all just multiplication, so it doesn't matter what order. So I'm going to put the order kind of in the way that I had the last one. And now I want to show you how we'd like to simplify this. So what I want to look for is I want to look for kind of groups here. So I need to see... Um, how many x squareds do I have? Well, I have, or excuse me, x plus 2's. I have 2 here and I have 3 in this one. So I'm going to factor this. So I'm going to bring out, so what's the most x plus 2's I can bring out? I can bring out 2 of them because each of these terms has at least 2 x cubes, x plus 2's. How many 4 minus x cubes do I have? I have 5 here and I have 4 here. So that means I can bring out 4 of them. Okay, and so then I foil, I factor that out, and let's see what I'm going to be um, be left with here. So this guy is gone completely, and this guy is gone completely because I have factored those out. So I factored it out, right? I factored an, an x four minus x cubed to the fourth and an x plus two squared. So those guys are gone completely, and then here I'm taking one away from each of these. So look at what I have. I'm left with three times. 4 minus x cubed minus 15x squared times x plus 2, right? Notice if I took these guys and I foiled them back in, I distribute them back in, then I would get what I had here. And so here's how I want you to write this. So we have x plus 2 quantity squared times 4 minus x cubed to the fourth, and then I'm just going to simplify in here, and I'm going to do a little bit of side work here. So I would have 12 minus 3x cubed, now I'm going to take this guy through, minus 15x cubed minus 30x squared. So my final answer here then, I'm just going to re combine some like terms, and I have some issues. One of those issues includes that I have to write my polynomials in descending order. You don't have to worry about that and 12. And so uh, so this is this is my simplified answer. You know, here I could probably factor out, you know, if we've really wanted to, what goes into all of those is 6. I might even take out a negative 6 into all of those to kind of make this look pretty. This is usually what we would do as mathematicians to just kind of make it look a little nicer. This would become plus 5x squared and this would be minus 2. And now we're pretty much done. This guy doesn't look like it's going to factor, and I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so I would take either this answer or this answer, but you must simplify these. Okay, let's talk about the quotient rule, and then I will stop talking. That'll be kind of good. Whoops. Okay. All right, so quotient rule. So that was the product rule. Now the quotient rule, what is a quotient? A quotient is just division. 
So again, we cannot take we cannot take the derivative. And I just want to do a simple example for you. If I had x to the fifth over x squared, clearly that is x cubed, and the derivative of that is 3x squared. We know that. But if you can say you can take the derivative of the top and divide it by the derivative of the bottom, people, then you're saying that actually your derivative is 5 halves x cubed, which clearly it's not, right? Oh, I shouldn't have put an equal sign there. So, so look at what this is saying again. I cannot take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. I, there's something else that I must do for this. So this is what we call the quotient rule. And I have a fun little saying of how to remember it. And you can look online too if you don't want to just look at my videos. And, um, and you can see, let's get rid of some of this here. You can see some ways to remember um, the quotient rule. If any of you have had calculus before, like in high school or something, oh, there's some fun little sayings. So I just remember my teacher in high school giving me this saying, and so let's, that's what you're stuck with because you got me as your teacher. So you got me with this silly, silly sayings and, and the nerdy jokes. Okay, so here's the quotient rule. I need to make sure I have some ink here and that I have the pen and not the eraser. Here's what the quotient rule is. You take the denominator, so kind of like the product rule, you multiply by the derivative of the numerator, then you subtract, okay, so you, you subtract the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, okay? So order matters in this case, all right? Order matters because it's subtraction. With the with the product rule, the order didn't matter, but it does with the quotient rule. And then on the denominator, what you do is you just square the denominator. And again, if you look on page 202 in your book, there's a proof of this, of why the quotient rule works. It's actually not too bad. Um, they do kind of a nice job of doing it with like a, uh, basically a general power rule. But here's my little trick for remembering this. Um, it's down d up minus up d down over down down. So here's what I mean. So if I, I know this sounds really, really silly, but sometimes little stuff like this helps you remember. So if I want the derivative of up over down, we're going to call it, instead of numerator and denominator, I'm going to call this up over down. Here's the trick. You do down times d up. And what I mean by d up, that means the derivative of the top. So down d up minus up d down all over down down, <laughs> which is just the denominator squared. So this is a trick for you to remember what to do. Down d up minus up d down over down down, where the d up means the derivative of the numerator, the d down means the derivative of the denominator, and down down just means squared. There, I've also seen um, people say high d low minus low d high all over um, like low low or something. I don't know if that's how it's said. Some of you are probably yelling at the screen because you say it differently. Um, but down d up minus up d down over down down, that's a, that's a way that was taught to me. No, I guess I was in college by a graduate student. He taught that to me and I remember it ever since. So let's look at an example. So again, I want to start off with this really silly example of x to the fifth over x squared, and I want to show you that it works. So y primed down, so that just means write the down. d up means take the derivative of the top. So down d up minus up d down, so the derivative of the bottom, all over down down. So you need to memorize the quotient rule. However you do that, if you don't like my silly little way of saying this, I do not take offense to that. I get it. And on the bottom, I would get x to the fourth. So look at what's going to happen here. I get 3x to the sixth over x to the fourth, which, what do you know, is 3x squared, which we know is the derivative of this because x to the fifth over x squared is x cubed. Okay, let's do a couple a couple um, examples and then we'll call it good. All right, so, oops, sorry about that. Let's do some examples here. So in all, let's do two of them. So let's find dy, d 
dx. So the quotient rule is quite useful because a lot of times we're going to have some quotients that we need to um, find the derivative of. So let's say we have y equals, let's start off kind of easy, 2x cubed plus 1 all over, um, I don't know, x to the fifth minus x, okay? So there's my quotient. There's no way to kind of, I, I mean, we can, you can use the product rule with this if you'd like to. If you'd like to use the product rule, what you would do is you'd rewrite it like this. So a lot of times you can use the product rule in place of the quotient rule. But then I need you to rewrite this as a fraction if you're going to use the product rule. So I think sometimes the quotient rule is just easier. So let's see what the quotient rule says. It says down, which means just write the denominator, write the down. D up, the derivative of the top is 6x squared, minus up, which is 2x cubed plus 1, D down, which is 5x to the fourth minus 1, and then this is all over down down. So that's all over x to the fifth minus x quantity squared. Again, that was the calculus part. That's sometimes the easy part. Again, just following the rules. Down, D up, minus up, D down over down, down. And now I'm just going to simplify this. I'm going to take the 6x squared through. So I get 6x to the seventh minus 6x cubed minus, now I'm going to, let's foil this. I'm going to do a bit of side work. I would get 10x to the seventh minus 2x cubed plus 5x to the fourth. Now why am I doing this? Because I know that negative has to go through. So I want to go ahead and multiply this out before I take the negative through. Now I'm good to take that negative to every single term, right? Because we're subtracting that entire numerator. And then on the denominator, don't FOIL out the denominator. I would just leave it as is. Sometimes we're going to care about where the derivative is undefined, and so we would want to just leave it like that. Um, and now I just kind of, you know, clean this up a little bit. I'm going to combine some like terms. So I have negative 4x to the seventh plus 8x cubed. Um, Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Are you yelling at me? Oh, I bet you're yelling at me. Uh, <laughs> this is a negative x cubed plus 2x. That would be a minus 4 again. Cool. x cubed. Um, oh, do you see what I've done? This is going to drive me crazy. I don't have an end descending order. That makes me so sad, but I'm not going to worry about it because the commutative law of addition tells me it doesn't matter. But this is good. So this is my final answer, and this is completely simplified. I want to do one more um, that can be a little bit tricky. And again, a lot of times with the quotient rule, you can use the product rule, and that's fine. So let's do part B. Um, but let's see. What if we had something, I'm trying to think of one that um, isn't too hard, but it's kind of fun. So what if we had this? y equals the square root of um, 2x plus 1 all over x squared minus 4. So I want to take the derivative of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that I have not only the general power rule, but I also have a quotient rule that's going to be in there as well. So I'm going to take the derivative. So y primed, I'm going to bring the 1 half down, leave the inside, okay? And then we'll talk about how to simplify this in a moment. Take 1 away. So I take 1 away. Now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and here's where the quotient rule comes in. So the derivative of the inside, I'm going to do down, d up, that's just 2, minus up, so I just rewrite the numerator, d down, which is just 2x, all over down down, x squared minus 4 quantity squared. Uh, this one's going to get a little tricky, but I'm not too worried about it, okay? This negative one-half, what that does is it's going to flip it, okay? That's what the negative does, and then we're still going to have the square root. So I'm going to take what I have basically is the square root of x squared minus 4. Again, the calculus was easy, right? It's the algebra that's hard. And then I have this square root of 2 plus, 2x plus 1 down here. Then I'm going to simplify this stuff. I would have 2x squared minus 8 minus 4x squared plus 2x. 
simplify this a little bit. It looks like we get a negative 2x squared. Um, and then what do I get? Minus, uh, minus 2x minus 8, I think. All over, oh, that didn't really work. That's okay. x squared minus 4 to the 2. Now, I can take this 2 right here. I can cancel with, remember, if anything's in the denominator, I can cancel it with anything in the numerator. So I'm going to take a 2 out of these guys here. That's going to become a 4. And I'm actually just going to bring the negative out front here as well. So let me show you what's going to happen on top. So you are going to get on top, just because I brought the negative out, x squared plus x plus 4. Now you're asking, what happened to all this stuff right here? Well, this guy is x squared minus 4 to the 1 half. So I can actually take half away from this x squared minus 4. So if I take half away from 2, that leaves me with 1 and a half or 3 halves. And then I could just leave this guy down here. And now I'm going back to exponents, and I have no idea why. But that's okay. So this is completely simplified now. You can make that the square root of 2x plus 1. But what I've done again is I've just canceled 1 of this 1 half with the 2, and that left me with 1.5. So that guy is gone. All right, I've talked for 26 minutes now on the product and quotient rule. They are two of my favorite rules in mathematics, so I hope you have an enjoyed. And um, as always, let me know if you have any questions.